That's not a bad spot. And look at the spot we're in. Ho, ho, ho. Beauty. Oh, what a glorious sunset. So, oh, where are we today, you ask? Well, from that first bit of clip, you'll know. We're heading up onto Kinder Scout via the NAB. I've seen our Hengist's wild camp videos quite a few times and I've never actually been up that route. So we're off out for a quick one-nighter. It's about five o'clock. We're gonna pop up there, up to the NAB. I'll have a scout out, see if that's worth a camp, but probably more than likely gonna end up uh, up near Ringing Roger. Maybe head to the uh, Trig on Edo Moor and then uh, look around for a campsite. Gonna look at a couple of aircraft wrecks as well, but uh, we'll see. Um, I might either do that tonight or in the morning when I get up. When I head down back to Edale, left my car in there overnight, only £7.90. Um, and then uh, I'll probably pop in the Penny Pot Cafe tomorrow. That was a bit of a tongue twister. So yeah, quick one nighter up on Kinder. By the looks of everyone going up there at the moment, it might be a bit busy, but we'll see when we get up there. Anyway, we're heading up here now up along that wall, back over, and just gonna work our way up to the top of the nab, and then over towards Golden Clough, and they're ringing Rogers. Well, Steve, I can see why you stopped three times going up this. <sighs> like a police body cam, this, isn't it? But just a bit of an angle. It's like a strap mount for the uh, GoPro. Whew. Up here and around there. Head on favour that way towards Golden Clough. Some lovely light on Grinsbrook. Grinsbrook, sorry. Grinsbrook. That's another way up. Bit of a scramble at the end. Been up there a few times in, in the past. But never ever try this route. So we'll see what we do. And I'll meet up with you if and when I get to the top. Look at that. There's a beautiful Vale of Edale. You've got Wynn Hill in the distance, Lewes Hill, Back Tor, Hollins Cross, on to Mam Tor, Russia Pedge, and you're looking around towards Brown, Brown Knoll, and right in front of us there is Grindsbrook Knoll, Grindsbrook, and behind us this is a NAB, and we're going up towards Ringing Roger, where we're hoping to camp. Well, this is this isn't a bad little campsite, is it? A bit close to the path, you know, but some fairly flat bits there. It's a possibility, isn't it? Although quite exposed. But look at that. Ringing Roger. So cold because the wind blows through and makes a ringing sound. That way's over to, I think it's Olibrook Clough. You can go up the side there, a bit of a scramble up onto the top. Or you can come round here and up 
uh, golden cloth, which I think is what I'm going to do. Hopefully there might be some water there, we'll see when we go along it, but maybe that's the route that uh, Mr Hengist takes, so I'll try that. Uh, quite a few people up here already, I've seen a few people either going back camping or coming, uh, you know, coming out camping, so it might be a bit busy finding a spot, because <laughs> Kinder Scouts are a new mecca for wild campers, and right this way, it's a lovely area and quite uh, accessible for most people. So yeah, we're not gonna go that way, we're gonna go along here, and I think round the edge and up Golden Clough, which is probably slightly less steep, I think, looking at the map. So you can see why I brought water with me. This uh, Golden Clough's bone dry. But uh, look at the light over there. Stunning views, mate. Saw somebody up going up there camping, had a little bit of a chat. So, yeah, stunning, stunning light. Once we get to the top, I'll take some pictures, but uh, so far, so good. Stopped about maybe three or four times on the way up there, but that's not bad going for someone with my calibre. But anyway, yeah, we're going to head up now and meet the main rim path and then probably head to the right, I think, and uh, see if we can find somewhere to camp. Stunning, look at that. Looking down to Edo, we've got Ringing Roger over there. And then you come around to Grins, Grinslow Knoll, Grins Brook. People camping over here already. But uh, we're going to head along here towards Druid Stones and that area. And um, the trig's over off to the left somewhere on the, the Eastern Trig, as they call it. And so trying to camp close to that. So in the morning, I think what the plan is we'll go and hunt for these aircraft wrecks. And then head back down, probably the way we came, I think. Or oh, maybe skirt around the other side of Ringing Roger there. And then, yeah, um, going to the Penny Pot Cafe. And have a slap up feast, I think. Uh, the water sources are pretty dry at the minute. Uh, golden cloth was pretty much bone dry. Even though we've had a bit of rain just over the last couple of days, but clearly not enough to start that flowing again. But we'll head off down here. I've got enough water. I've got about two litres with me. So, you know. That'll do, if I don't find anything uh, else anywhere, that'll be enough to, to last me till tomorrow. And get back down with a bit of water left, it's going to be a bit of a blazer tomorrow, but I plan on getting up early, probably with the old uh, sunrise, and then head off down. I think the cafe opens about eight, so my plan is to get down there for just after eight, and uh, hopefully get some breakfast. There's a little bit of water, but nothing running, so nothing you can really use. Uh, which is why I brought water with me. Anyway, that's a blabbing. We're going to crack on down here. That's not a bad spot. If I go across that way, that will be reasonably flat. Um, certainly the sleeping area will be. And then we've got stunning views right across the whole Hope Valley, um, Edale, sorry, in the Great Ridge and Wenning Hill and, and tomorrow morning. And it's a bit sheltered here, actually. These rocks are sheltering it a bit, but should get a cracking sunset over there and a cracking sunrise over there. So, I think, I think, I think if I pitch it there, that's not going to be a bad spot. I'll just have the tent facing that way with the doors and we'll get some stunning views, hopefully. The wind's meant to drop to about seven mile an hour and I might actually, you could come back down that way tomorrow by the looks of it. There. That doesn't look too bad a path on that next sort of clough. And then in the morning, we'll pack up, maybe just go and see if we can find these aircraft wrecks and head back down the way we came. But yeah, I think I'll have, this will do me, mate. So we'll get the tent pitched. There she is. 
all set up. I just did a time lapse of that, but uh, a lot easier now. That, um, the, uh, the ground sheet's all in and tightened up anyway, so it's uh, pretty much pop up and you're done. And uh, yeah, that's going nowhere, mate. The seams are all looking good. I'll dry out then today and tomorrow because it's going to be really hot because it was a bit damp when I put it away last time. So there's a bit of alloy oxide on the poles, but I just rubbed that off. But yeah, that's pretty much. And look at the spot we're in. Ho ho ho! Beauty. We have got Ringing Roger, Grindsbrook, Grindsbrook Knoll. You then come over Brown Knoll in the distance across the Russia Pedge at the Great Ridge all the way around to Wynn Hill and you can just see uh, Stanage and Bamford Edge in the background and that and then over here you look at over towards the wool packs and and whatever over that way so yeah what a cracking spot and no one else around here there's a few camping up on the top but you know what who's got the best view I should hopefully get a cracking sunset over there and a cracking sunrise I would say probably over Wynn Hill which will be beautiful because last time I was over here it was here but I think it gradually moves around doesn't it but yeah well chuffed with that I'm glad I just came down here I wasn't going to bother but I'd watched a video by a guy hiking for health I think he's called something like that he was on that big sort of five-man camp the other week with Phil Ward, Hengist, Dave Goodman and uh, Kev Green was it I think but uh, he always wanted to camp here and it, I tell you what mate come down to this edge slight angle there but that won't be a problem as long as I don't roll down the hill. But tonight, mate, I'm having my tea over there, sat on that uh, on them rocks, because it's going to be a fantastic day tomorrow. And tomorrow morning, we'll head up over to the Trig, hunt around for them aircraft wrecks. There's two, there's three sites, but there's two. A Handley Page Halifax, I think, and uh, a Wellington. So we'll go and have a look at those. And then I'll probably, because I think they're slightly over that way, is probably come back down that path, and then back down the way I came, I'm going to go slap up feast and go and see the missus. Not see to the oh, might see to the missus. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, but a uh, bit of a shout out to Sylvia Rowley off uh, Facebook. Uh, met her in Morrison's car park this morning. Scared the bloody life out of me. Tap on the window. The missus said, I thought you were going to get out and slap him. <laughs> I just looked at her and uh, I said, oh, we follow you on Facebook. So it's really nice to meet you. That's a few I've met now. So yeah, really nice to meet you. Thanks for the support. I think you and your hubby are a bit like us. We're bikers. So, uh, yeah, I hope you have a good time in the peaks. I think you were out on the wool packs the night before, so I hope you're having a good time. But for now, I'm going to get all my gear in the tent, get my air mat in, my mat in, my airbed blown up and whatever. And, uh, yeah, should be a cracking night. Well, that's the view from the tent. Fantastic, mate. The sunset should be over there behind them rocks. Sunrise should be over the other side. So yeah, just had some people walk past, looks like I might have nicked their spot. <laughs> they didn't look very happy. Oh, when we lost company, we had to get up really early. Mate, I don't mind, I'll be up early for the sunrise before I head down there. But wow, what a fantastic evening. Really got the weather right, it's going to be nice tomorrow and then thunderstorms Monday. So it's about two and a half mile, I think, up here. It's only a short yomp, but <sighs> steep. I tell you now, that was a steep climb up the nab. Fair play to you, Angus. I think uh, I stopped about three or four times going up there, but not a bad route. You know, I got my old four wheel drive out, as the poles are called. Um, so, yeah, that's all done now. So, next steps, I think, get the stove set up, have a bit of scram, and I'll go and sit over on them rocks, I think, have a brewing and catch the sunset. We've got, I think, sunset tonight, it's about quarter to nine. Um, so, you know, we'll see how we go. Anyway, just before I do go, just thought I'd show you. Um, this is the bush knife that uh, my missus bought me while I was uh, away on holiday. Very sharp. Um, I've just cut myself on it. Damascus blade. Beautiful piece of artwork, that. So I've brought that with me. Yeah, just in case you never know when you might need a knife. <laughs> Um, the axe is very similar. In fact, the axe is very similar, very nice. So I'm going to stop this bleeding because I just caught myself on that, trying to balance a camera and a knife. 
and uh, being on blood thinners it might take a little while to stop but anyway yeah i'm gonna get some scram on the go tonight scram porcini mushroom risotto doesn't look much but it's very very tasty so i'll have that and then that'll be just about a good timing to go and catch the sunset over there and uh Wait for all the conspiracy theories about chemtrails to come on my post when I post the pictures tomorrow. Anyway, catch you in a bit after I've had my scram and headed over to the rocks. Well, the sun's setting now, starting to drop a bit in temperature, put my fleece on. But yeah, not a brilliant sunset, but we'll see how it goes. I've um, stopped bleeding now. <laughs> it had some serrated edges on the back of the knife and I just caught my finger on. I don't know, I don't know I'm lethal I am. But yeah, um, stunning evening. Hopefully it's going to be a really stunning sunrise tomorrow morning. But yeah, we'll have a walk over to the rocks now, have a little wander around and then I'll head back to the tent, have a Horlicks and uh, see if I can get a good night's sleep with that. Because uh, I think I don't sleep too good, so sometimes I have a coffee before I go to sleep uh, when I'm out camping, which doesn't make sense really, does it? So i just look at my finger there. But yeah, anyway, we'll have a wander over take some pictures and then uh, head back in for the night. Sunset just clipping the top of uh, Russia Pedge and Mantor there, and yeah, you can see it now. Just sky starting to go red over by the stones there. I'll make a nice shot. I'm just having a Horlix, see if that makes me sleep any better tonight. So, I shall continue to watch the sky go red, and then I shall uh, head in for the night, I think. A great camp so far. My fingers start bleeding again. <laughs> Fucking nightmare, mate. I'm a nightmare. Don't know what I look like with these glasses on. Certainly don't make me look intelligent. But yeah, anyway, so uh, I'm just going to crack on, watch the rest of this, probably take a few pictures. I might just check in with you before I nod off. But if not, I shall see you in the morning and hopefully we'll have a cracking sunrise. Oh, what a glorious sunset. Over Grand's Low Knoll there, fantastic. Anyway, almost stopped bleeding there. <laughs> so, yeah, fantastic little camp that. I'm glad I walked down off the main path down to Ringin Roger. It's a really good place to sort of set up. There's a few people just over there on the horizon. Walked past me earlier, they set up there. That was my other option. But, yeah, fantastic sunset. I'm going to hit the hay for the night now, go and catch up with Mrs. Viking or Mrs. To Be Viking getting married next October so yeah I'm gonna crack on the tent now and I'll catch up with you hopefully we have a great sunrise signing off see you in the morning I know it's nothing new but it's so good to see you we do this every day and I'm still so amazed by you So hold me tight through the night mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just us two, me and you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 I can't believe you love me That was a cracking little sunrise that. I actually got some sleep as well, so I think the Horlix worked. I got about four or five hours sleep, I think, which is good for me. Uh, 
the sun's risen, looking gorgeous over the Hope Valley. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to head off over to the Trig on the Eastern Trig Point, I think they call it, and uh, see if we can find his aircraft wrecks and head down. So I'm going to have this brew, um, pack up, took a load of photographs, did a time lapse, and it worked this time. But the midges are out now, so I'm going to get moving before it becomes too horrendous. As always, leave no trace. This is midge hell, mate. I forgot how bad the midges are, so I've been bitten to fuck. <laughs> anyway, I've got everything, I think. Yeah, keys, phone, money. That was a wonderful camp, that. We're going to head off now, up the main path, to... Uh, to go to the trig point. I think I've got time. Just, oh, fuck me, mate, look at that. Oh. Yeah, seven o'clock. I think I've got time to make it up there and then uh, head back down, get it for about half eight, grab some breakfast. Sorry, these midges are horrendous. It's like being back in bloody, on the west coast of Scotland, mate. And these do bite. So yeah, we're gonna head up there. Oh, just give me water. Where's that gone? Uh -huh. Get some of that down me. So up here, back to the main path over to the trig, spend about half an hour looking for these wrecks and then we'll head back down, probably down that path there. But yeah, that was a good night, I actually got some sleep for once. It's a good, fairly good um, flat pitch that, um, and that tent doesn't take much pulling up and dropping either, the old Vern, North Tent Vern one. But yeah, stunning scenery. This morning did a time lapse took some pictures a lot of people camping there's some on Grindsbrook there's some over there there's one there there's two over there that passed me earlier in the evening yesterday I think I might have nicked their pitch <laughs> I'm not sure but yeah really enjoyed that third one of the year not the last by any stretch like I say once every month or so I'm gonna try and get out at least I've got a few if a YouTubers who've asked if I want to you know, go out for a camp or a hike with them. So I think I've got about three or four of them. So I'll probably start to line some of those up. Here we are, Kinder East Trig. Oh, to com commemorate the Viking Venture Scout Unit, 1968 to 2004. I remember them when I was a lad in the Scouts, the Vikings, they were the top boys. Well, look at that, superb views. Absolutely wonderful. Deer and Tedge over there and that. Um, that might be the mast over on Home Moss or Black Hill. And I guess that's bleak low. Higher shelf stones and that. Well, that could be Black Hill over there actually. Anyway, one of them. <laughs> Yeah, but stunning view. There's not a soul up here, which is good. A bit boggy. Now these wrecks aren't far from here. I think they're sort of southwest. So sort of in that direction. I've got them plotted on my uh, phone, so I should be able to find them. But yeah, let's go and tap out on it. Super duper. Another one down. I don't think I've ever been to this one. All the years I come up kinder, I don't think I ever came to this one. We tend to go snake path and from Hayfield side and Kinder Downfall and all the usual bits and the Northern Edge, but this isn't a bit of, bit of nowhere. I think it's Edel Moor. Anyway, I'm going to take a few pictures. My finger got cut again this morning, just broke the scab off it. <laughs> but look at that. That would have been a stunning sunrise from up here. And you could probably camp up here actually. There's a couple of spots maybe here that look quite flat and over there. Make a note of that one. Anyway. Photograph time, and then we're going to go and try and find these two wrecks. The Wellington, which is over here, 
I think I have to go for that gate. So what I might do, these are quite close to the trig. I'll do the Halifax, try and find the Wellington, and then drop back down and uh, head back down. I think it's Olabrook, I think it's called. Olabrook Clough, something like that. There's a nice little path there. That'll just take it back down to the Nab and back to Edale. Change of plan, I've been just looking for these wrecks, but I'm running out of time. I've got to be home for like nine to take my blood thinners. I only brought one out with me for last night. So uh, we'll come back for the wrecks another day, I think. For now, we're going to head back down this path to the main track and then head down to the uh, Edel and the Cathy because that's going to take me about an hour. Maybe a bit shorter, I don't know, but a bit of a shame that, but a bit of a bog fest and you end up hunting around and I really haven't got time today. So lesson learned next time, bring two of your blood thinners with you because I have to take them every 12 hours exactly. I think you've got an hour or so either side potentially, but by the time I got down to Edel, got all my kit off, wandered to the cafe, got served and eaten, you know, be getting on for nine o'clock then probably, so we'll just have a wild camp this time. <laughs> Shame that, but you know, it is what it is. Adapt and overcome. So we're just gonna follow this path when we came up. We've done the trig on East Kinder Trig. So we're just gonna wander this down. It follows this gruff over here back down to the main track and then yeah we'll see how we get on so I'll catch you when we're on top of Ollum I think it's called Ollum Brook or Ollum Brook Clough and then we're going to follow a path down the side there but yeah stunning views you can see Chapel Gate there see that like white path that's Chapel Gate that's an old route over to Chapel on the Frith from Edale at least medieval if not older that's a nice steady climb up there. <laughs> One of those where you keep thinking you've got to the top and it just keeps carrying on. Um, I did a video there where I went looking for some aircraft wrecks on Russia Pebbage and then gullies, but couldn't get through the fence. But anyway, we'll keep on trying. Main thing is, we're outdoors. Um, the midges aren't too bad now because there's a bit of a breeze has picked up, but Jesus, earlier on, mate, that really did remind me when I lived in Kinloch leaving. I only lived there for about 12 months because it was just horrendous in summer. And then uh, I moved to Shetland where the wind blew them all away. <laughs> uh, my daughters are still up there. But yeah, so um, hoping over the next few weekends to get on a few more hikes. Uh, so start up the mileage. And like I say, go on a wild camp once a month. But yeah, really enjoyed that. Actually got some sleep, which is good. So clearly getting used to being outdoors and I'm thinking again a quilt because uh, I can't get on my sleeping bags are too restrictive for me so um, I'm in Alfreton on Thursday I think helping my uh, his stepson is what you call him is my missus's son he's a real big TikToker by the way uh, Josh and Jace if you've heard of them um, there's a wrap store there I'll see if it's open because I might nip and see if they've got any quilts in there but yeah stunning views over there towards Mum tour. distance earlier they look like people thought well there's a crowd of people coming up there bloody sheep <laughs> oh dear it is a bit early i suppose but there are a few people up and about i mean it's quarter to eight now so you know still got a fair way to go but uh, i think we're over the rocky bit of that one because that was a bit of a bit of a nightmare and then we're on the nab might get my sticks out for going down there protect my knees a bit We'll see how we go. Didn't feel too bad at the moment. I managed to come down that easy enough. That's not a bad little route up, I bet. It's quite a gentle slope. So, you know, bear that in mind, depending which way we're going and where we're going. So, yeah. It's starting to warm up now. I've got to take my jacket off and everything. And 
left me mark on my jacket after I'd rolled it up, so I had to unroll it all. And <laughs> one of them days, in it. So head off down here. That's the top of the nab. Follow the path round and back down. But yeah, stunning views. I think guys are still in their tents up there. I can't lie in. That's where we were last night. What a spot, what a spot. Loads of pipits out, meadow pipits and uh, no skylarks so much, but meadow pipits and the odd willow warbler. Lots of them flying out and hopping around in front of me. It's great to see that. Ah, <sighs> feel reset after that. Got quite a lot on my work at the moment. Um, can't say too much about it, but it's quite a big project. So uh, it's good just to go and unwind and just you no know, no looking at your phone too much. Just enjoying nature, really. It is good for your soul, as they say. Um, if it redeems your soul, I need to get out a lot more because my soul needs a lot of redeeming. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, that's another story. But yeah, look at Grinesbrook, Grinesbrook Knoll. Lovely rocks over there. We were up here, like I say. That looks like a route up to Grinesbrook Knoll. There, look. Might try that. That looks a bit uh, gentler because I did Grinesbrook back in the 80s, mate. And uh, I think we went up that bit there and it was just like a scramble. <laughs> um, I don't think we were planning for that. So we got there, we were like, bloody hell. But... Uh, Maybe not with an 18 kilo pack on my back. So, it's, uh, you know, you've got to balance yourself, haven't you? But I'm getting used to it now. Got it just a bit better. It's all sitting on my hips properly. It's not really weighing on my shoulders, but I've got quite narrow hips for some reason. So it tends to slip the hip belt a bit. So you have to just keep tightening it up. But yeah, look at the heather. Beautiful, all purple and flowering. Ah, we are so lucky. It's a beautiful country, despite all the shit that's going off this is when it reminds you what a great place it is and it'll be great again i'm sure god knows when though at least five years it won't be will it but anyway no politics <laughs> um that'll just uh probably get myself cancelled <laughs> anyway this path goes down here and meets as a path there's a route up there if you want to go up the quick route and we came around the edge here so we should meet this over here. It looks like it's going to get a bit boggy in a minute. Look at the heather. Really is showing there, look, along the hillside. But yeah, we're going to crack on down here and uh, keep moving, get to that fry up. Well, that's another camp done. I went to the Penny Pot Cafe. Wrong one, mate. No fry up, just a croissant and tea in a fancy pot. But I didn't feel hungry, to be honest with you, so it did me. So, yeah, I really enjoyed that, mate. Up to Ring, on to Ring and Roger. Just camp there for the night and then back down this morning. Stunning view, stunning sunset. Reset. Feel good for doing that. I'm going to head off home now and, uh, you know, see what the day holds. <coughs> so, um, yeah, that's it, really. Not much more to say. So uh, have a good one if you're up to anything this weekend. And then I'll catch you on the next hike or camp. <laughs>